Hello everyone and welcome back to another video that nobody asked for. living under a rock, you will know that Singapore is currently on lockdown and what that means is that we now have a lot of time on our hands and it's the perfect chance for us to keep up with your final step skincare routine. It's been about two weeks since I've been home and honestly I'm just going a little bit bonkers because I don't really know what to do with my time which is the reason why I'm doing this video. Even though I do have a lot of things I need to do such as finding a job because your boy is graduating but he is so so unemployed. Before I get started on today's video, I just want to throw a disclaimer out there that I am not an expert, I am not a dermatologist, I'm not an aesthetician, I'm just simply someone that is overly enthusiastic with my skincare and it's kind of like a hobby to me. So I have a super oily t-zone around here and at the same time I am dehydrated at certain parts of my cheeks and my mouth area and it sometimes gets really red and patchy and my whole face in general is just sensitive. For this area, there's a little bit of like a broken skin barrier so anything that touches my face just kind of gets really stinging. So yes, it's a problematic mess just like my life. Oh, and if you're a skincare enthusiast like me and you know skincare YouTubers like Susan Yara or Hiram, please take them down below because I would love to have their professional opinion on my skincare routine. So let's just get started. Really weird and ugly right now. I can't really see myself to be honest. Okay, okay, I think this looks fine. So for the very first step, I'll be going in with a cleansing oil. I'm currently using this one from the face shop and it's the Rice Water Bright Light Cleansing Oil. So if I'm wearing sunscreen on the day itself, I'll usually go in with a double cleanse. Honestly, I haven't really used any other cleansing oils before, so I can't really compare this and to say whether this is good or this is bad. But for me, thankfully, it hasn't broken me out yet. So it does have a pretty strong fragrance, which I am personally not a fan of. It also doesn't really sting my skin even around the chin area so I'm kind of surprised because I do know that there are quite a few strong fragrant compounds in this cleansing oil and one of them is called Butalphenol Methyl Propanol which is apparently a... can act like a skin allergen and it can cause contact dermatitis to some people. It, it ranks red in the EWG scale which is kind of scary to be honest but besides that I don't really find much of an issue with this. Um, one gripe I have about it is that it doesn't really emulsify very well. The trick with cleansing oils is that I tend to like to go in around my nose area and massage it real well and like forehead area and I do get little gunks that popped up of the pores which are probably just like sebum and dirt but it's quite satisfying to see it. So next up I have the Make Prem Save Me Relief Moisture Cleansing Foam. It has a pH of 5.5 and has coconut extract for hydration. I think this cleanser is fine if you don't have really dry skin. If you have oily skin, I think this will work for you. It does have a scent to it. It kind of smells a little bit like lavender. And that's the thing with a lot of K-Beauty products because they kind of have this trio of essential oils which is mainly lavender, sage and bergamot in a lot of their products to substitute like fragrances which I personally don't like. I'd rather have synthetic fragrances than essential oils but it's okay because this is a wash off product so I don't really mind it. The good thing about this cleanser is that it doesn't have the squeaky feeling which honestly your cleanser shouldn't have. However, if you're someone with drier skin, I would suggest you pick a cleansing milk instead. I know Hada Labo makes a really good one for, I think, pretty much the same price, so you can check that out. Once a month, I'll go in with the Peeling Solution by The Ordinary. It's the one that's blood-like and it contains 30% of AHAs and 2% BHAs. I personally find that it's too potent to be using it twice a week, which is why I only do it once a month. And don't get me wrong, I really love my acids and I really love how brands like The Ordinary and The Inky List can deliver such good products to us with high active ingredients. Therefore, I think that there's a the right place and right time for them. It really scares me whenever I see a company market an acid product as an everyday product because unless you know your acids really well, you shouldn't be using it daily. And this is especially so if you're someone in your teens or in your 20s because your skin is still healthy and it has this natural cell renewal cycle. And basically what you're doing with an exfoliant is that you're trying to quicken the process of exfoliation on your skin, which 
might not necessarily always be a good case. And a lot of people neglect the fact that the simple act of just washing your face or swiping your face with a cotton pad is already an act of physical exfoliation. So there's really no need to add extra stress to your skin. Anyway, enough sidetracking. Next up, I'll be going in with an essence. I'm currently using the Tum Revolution First Treatment Essence Pro Ferment A by Misha. So this is basically a fermented essence and it uses 95% of yeast fermentation. This is however not the same fermentation ingredient as you will get in SK2. And I'm currently testing this right now because I do have quite a few first essence that I am road testing and trying to figure out which will be the best because I think there's just way too many on the market. I usually go in with two layers of essence because I think the essence are really light and you can afford to go in with extra layers. So this essence also consists niacinamide, pearl powder and bifida extract which all helps in brightening the skin. And if you guys would like me to give a review of all the different essences I've tested so far, do let me know in the comment box below. Alright, so up next is the 5 Energy Roots Vital Treatment Essence by Blythe. So it is yet another new essence that I'm trying out and I believe it contains 5 different root extracts such as ginseng, burdock, and a few other plants that I can't remember the names of but it supposedly helps with anti-aging and provides antioxidants to your skin so usually for the essence I would like to first rub it in circular motion before I pat it in because I read somewhere that the skincare actually absorbs better when it's being massaged into your skin as opposed to patting so I usually leave patting to the last and the thing about this essence is that it is quite light but it is slightly thicker than water so there is a certain amount of slip to it and you can spread it pretty well to your neck and the rest of your face and like I said I will usually go in with two layers of essence so I'll do that with every essence that I use which is the reason why I'm going through essences really quickly right now and don't forget your neck area because you know you age there as well and I know I have a lot of lines on my neck that's because I have a huge double chin or triple chin but I can't help it until one day I decide to lose weight but anyway, pat it all over your skin and usually what I like to do is that a lot of product tend to build up around your fing- like this crevices of your fingers so I tend to do this and I'll spread it and go in once again and pat it down press it down basically and just not waste any product because this is quite an expensive essence. So up next, I have a really gimmicky looking product. It's the Beam Cell Glow Ampoule by Cell Factory. And as you can see, it comes with a syringe. This ampoule has everything I hate in one bottle. Firstly, let's talk about the really gimmicky packaging. Like, I'd rather have it in Alice Palm. Secondly, it has a really strong fragrance and it's not a fragrance that you would like. It kind of smells a little bit like perfume plus detergent which is not the best on your face or on your skin and it also has a really toxic looking yellow color which I think is super unnecessary. I think colorings I think colorings in skincare products are just super unnecessary and uncalled for. There's no need for them. They just add more stress to your skin. And also it has a really gimmicky patented ingredient called the Human Blood Cell Conditioned Media. Which sounds really scary to be honest. I have no idea why they decided to call it that. But basically what it is is that it's a component that consists of like different proteins and peptides within the ingredient itself. So you might be asking them why am I sharing this product to you guys, right? That's because for some reason it actually works. Like I can't believe I'm saying this. For everything I hear about this product, including the price point, it actually works. So basically what you do is you dispense, I don't think you can see, but you dispense a little bit of the product out like that. And for some reason, even though it has so many allergens, it doesn't sting my face, it doesn't cause my face to break out, it doesn't make my face red or flare up. Actually, even when I was at my worst with a red patch on my mouth, this didn't sting my face at all. I really feel that my skin is getting tighter which is super unusual because as you can see I have really fat chubby cheeks and they are kind of saggy. I usually let this ampoule sit on my skin for about a minute before I go in with the Garden of Wisdom 2% Alpha Arbutin and 1% Kojic Acid Serum. 
And what this does is that it helps to basically brighten the skin. It comes in a really brown, orangey colour. Kind of like vitamin C. And it also has a little bit of a rusty scent after it dries up. Similar to vitamin C. So Garden of Wisdom is basically a brand from the UK and I first came across it when I saw Caroline Hirons and Wayne Goss talking about it. And it's supposed to be, you know, yet another variation of products like the Inky List and The Ordinary. So I do use a separate vitamin C but I use that primarily in the morning because I have a lot of layers of skincare in the evening and I just want my vitamin C to be absorbed at the maximum capacity that it can. So that's the reason why I only use it in the morning. And up next, I have the Artemisia Ampule from Misha. This is so, 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 so good. If you haven't picked it up, I urge you to pick up one now. This is better than anything I've used. It's better than Sika serums that I've used. This is basically an Artemisia Ampule that helps to elevate the redness and basically any sensitive issues you have, it helps to calm down your skin. It contains 70% of Artemisia extract and they are double fermented which means that it increases the efficacy and the ingredients of the extracts. I usually use one whole dropper of it and it has a very herby scent similar to a lot of Mark Ward or Artemisia products but honestly I think this smells way better than most of the other products that I've tested before and um, it has no fragrance which I'm pretty surprised by because Misha products tend to use fragrance and it also has a really minimal ingredient deck. So if you're someone that's using Sika serums and you're feeling like it's not working out for you, maybe you can try Mark Ward or Artemisia because like for me, Sika serums don't really work for me, they don't really calm my skin down and for Mark Ward it's a totally different story because the moment I use it, I just feel like the redness and the stinging feeling that I get is just gone. Okay, so if I'm really extra, on some days I'll go in with a thermal water between each serum step just to lock in more hydration. And then before the water actually dries out, right, you quickly go in with the next step. So the next one I'm using is the Snail Bee High Content Essence by Benton. Um, I was previously using the one from CosRx, the Snail Mucin Power 96. But that was just way too finicky and difficult to use. And I think it caused a little bit of peeling of the product as well. So I have decided to try to venture out and find something a little bit easier. Even though I would have to say that the CosRx one is a lot more cost effective than this one that I'm using right now. But this also contains oligopeptide. So in case you haven't seen a repeated pattern around here, my skincare basically is just full of antioxidants, peptides, collagen, and just hydration and moisture. That's all I focus on because that's all I can do at my age right now. Once again, I'll go in with thermal water before my next step. So this is the last serum that I'm going to be using for today. I know I've used a lot of serums, there are just too many steps in my routine. But this is the Bella Monster Stress Out Solution Serum. And it's just basically another calming serum. And for me, I know some people say that you layer your skincare based on viscosity, but I kind of do it based on my skincare needs for that day. So for example, if I am currently going through like bad breakouts and everything, I will probably go in with a salicylic acid treatment first before I go in with any essence or anything like that. And the reason is because the more layers of skincare you put on, the more layers the ingredients will need to penetrate into before it reaches your skin. Okay, I lied. I still have one more treatment to go and that is my salicylic acid treatment. So the one I'm currently using is the Cost Baja 2% BHA liquid. Honestly, salicylic acid is good for your skin um, if you use it with care. And there are a lot of good brands out there such as Paula's Choice. In fact, I think only Paula's Choice make a pretty good BHA serum. But it's way too expensive for me because I'm using it so often and my face is so big. So I have sussed this one out. It's by a Korean brand called Cost Baja and apparently it uses 2% of extra BHA and not betaine salicylate 
it kind of emulsifies for a little while when you rub it between your palms but it just disappears very quickly and it doesn't cause any peeling or anything like that so I think that's great and the reason why I'm applying it right now is because currently I don't really have a lot of acne problems so there's no need for me to target my acne treatment at the very first step so usually for this serum I will leave it on for yet another two to three minutes before I go into the next step because um, salicylic acid is pH sensitive so I don't really want to mess up the pH value of the product if it's not fully dried yet. I personally don't think that there is a need to wait for like 10 minutes or half an hour before you can go in with the next product because honestly once the water content has vaporized, it is pretty much safe I think to go in with the next step. Okay so usually after the salicylic acid treatment, I will go in with a different gel. This is good for a lot of like blackheads and whiteheads so I tend to use it only around the forehead area and this is also where I tend to be the least sensitive so I'm not so worried about it. Okay wait, sorry I lied again, I have one more serum essence step before my moisturizer. So this is the green tea water bomb toner from Bonajo. Bonajo. Um, basically it's just a green tea extract and triple hyaluronic acid toner. And the reason why I'm using this as the very last step of my routine, right, is because um, I don't know if you can see, but this has very good slit. It is very thick and viscous, and I kind of put it all over my face as like almost like a massage cream in a sense. So usually I put this on, and then I'll. Because it has really good slip, I'll give my face like a quick little massage to, you know, firm up that loose skin. And the forehead area also. And... And the reason why I'm putting this as a last step is also because this is mainly a hyaluronic acid serum essence. And hyaluronic acid typically has the largest molecule out of a lot of the active ingredients around here. So it would just kind of sit on top of the skin layer. And then after that, I will go in with an eye cream before my moisturizer. So I'm currently using this one from Benton, yet again. Honestly, an eye cream is not really essential for your skincare because face cream works the same way. I'm just using this because I have it lying around and I don't want to waste it. So this will be a pretty good eye cream I would say because not only does it contain fermentation ingredients but it also consists of ceramides as well as oligopeptides. So it will really help with fine lines and just plumping up the whole area in general. So I usually use only a pea sized amount and rub it between my ring finger and just really gently go in with it. You don't really need to target or sort of like go in really hard because your eye area is delicate which is why you use your ring finger because it has the least strength but not only do I go beneath the eyes but I also go above the eyes and just this whole area in general and anything left over I just like go in with my smell lines and that's about it for my moisturizer I'll be using this Ceramide Auto Concentrate Cream by Ilayun and it's yet another Korean brand but I really love this because it has little bits of ceramide capsules and they kind of like melt only after you rub it in and, and it will slowly dissolve so I would say that it's better to rub this in between your palms first before going on your face but because I've been feeling a little bit dry lately I'll be going in with a facial oil and this is not like the kind of facial oils that you get outside because a lot of them are just fragrance and fillers. This is something that I concocted myself. It has blue chamomile carrot seed extract and baobab tomato oil, which is why it's a little bit green. Don't know if you can see it. But yeah. So usually I put three to five drops of it. And then I'll rub it in between my palms really, really well. Like, don't worry. Don't be scared of your hands absorbing the cream because there's enough to go around. And then, so you rub it really well and make sure like all the capsules have dissolved. You just pat it and press it in on the skin. Like that. And you go 
once again with a little bit of a massage and as you can see even though I've added oil into the mixture it doesn't look really oily or anything like that it just look kind of dewy and that's about it this is my really extensive 500 step skincare routine and I hope that you guys like some of the products that I've shown today if you find this video helpful please share this video and like down below and if you'd like me to produce more content like that please let me know in the comments below subscribe and I'll see you soon